They're looking to tie things up here in this series as uh, they need to show what they've got. It really matters. <laughs> show me what... I can't do it right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you are, you're having a rough time today. Jason's just a little bit sick. I mean, a lot of it's sick. I just like how I sound so much deeper. I mean, usually you're mentally sick, and I've grown accustomed to that. <laughs> I, I, I kind of just me. I mean, look who's talking. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been partners of crime a little bit as far as the way our deranged brains work, but that is for our off stream time or, or Twitter feeds or anything like that. It was going to matter. Snap, Sean. Snap, yeah. Well, come on, I'm trying to get back to the game here. You quit distracting me. All right, so it really is going to matter a lot the stage here on what you're going to see out of this team. Now, oh, it, yeah, this is this is a the best stage for a pharmacy combo. No surprise that any day is going to roll with it. You know who else plays a pretty good pharmacy also uh, of the same history? I think like I've heard of this guy before. Uh, I think it called... Uh, Tavikwe? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Tavike? <laughs> Tavike? I don't know. Either way, Mikey has every, already able to get the kill on his episode like, and Tavik. So as we just start talking about him, he gets completely wrecked. But I'll always look back, at least on Rose Tinted Glasses for Tavik, back at APAC in 2016. We just absolutely smashed Luna Kai in the Grand Finals. But so far, Mikey has been showing him, you're not the best Farah in the West. Oh, and you can take on a combo like that as a Farah. It is absolutely huge being able to hit those consecutive shots. It's so hard to do. You have to hit two out of three. That's like always kind of the marker I say. If you're gonna take down the Farah first, especially if you only hit oh. two out of four, yeah, let's see. Oh, damage boost is so good. Chunked later. Wow, but those air shots are, you know, it's a little volatile in the Farah v Farah fight, but man, if you can hit them consistently like that, it, it might well, actually, if it happens again, do you think Tavik switches? I don't think he necessarily switches, but it forces him to fight differently. So it puts that presence of mind it's Vic that I have to watch out for Mikey. I can't just ignore him and focus on the ground. Game. Yeah. He has to be, be omnipresent of the air and the ground. So it's going to be very difficult to play him. But as we talk about it, he picks himself up a kill under his opponent. And then Nevix gets himself a double kill. Really beautiful play from him. That is just enough. Tavik comes in and answers the bell. I want to see. I still don't. I'm not in love with the 76 here. I, it helps against the combo. But if you saw what happened there, this is what I, the point I was going to make before I was completely proven wrong. And maybe it'll happen again. I'm, I'm no stranger to being wrong. But Tavik comes in and hits a giant rocket. And then the follow up is Nevix on the ground. Getting someone in. He gets a pulse bomb too. What's nice about that is if you hit a rocket onto someone on the ground, you can instantly call. They are low. And tracers, they're yeah. quicker and better. And usually can get behind cover that the person will be taking. And there it is, Tavik himself up the kill yet again. And IPN's gonna go down to the self-destruct that was thrown over the wall to make sure it does this lodge. Actually, the far mercy. Maybe not expecting Tavik to pick up that kill, but he does it nonetheless. And after that initial hiccup, I guess we can say, Tavik is really showing that he seems to be the better far in this situation. And the sword is a little bit, it's a little bit risky, but I feel like if Otter's playing a super defensive diva, yeah, then it's really hard for Emil to be dislodged in any way or form. I think it comes down to like. Maybe reinforce jumping on top of him to actually make him run away, which ideally he should be able to pick up that 1v1 kill. I mean, they haven't really been in position to dislodge at all. As right away, they lose their Farah to Tavik early on. Mikey will even it up, though. Zebo had the resurrection, too, and that's what I assumed was going to come out. Immediately when you spot Tavik out of uh, any sort of uh, good positioning, just pop the visor on him, take him out. <laughs> they killed him with the shield. I right, sure did at least a lot of damage with the shield there. That's always rough to see, a Farah just barrage into a Winston shield. The thing is, they're still contesting the point, right? Not even a third's been get over to NWA to actually capture this one back because they're stalled as long as they possibly can. Now up to 75%, and Zebo's joined the party again, and he has the res up. Heroes never yeah, there's die. that res comes right in. It's a, it's a good tempo res. Bring back your other support. Bring back your D.Va. It should get you a good position. And Emil's trying to keep this alive. The, the air war will continue with Tavik taking out Mikey yet again. Zebo's very low, so they will try to take advantage of that, but a nice concussion should get them out of trouble. Another late res in tempo, but this is Misfits at 95%, and that's a lot of kills that they might be able to finally clean up this point and flip it back over. Does appear to be going that way, Jason. Pretty sure they stalled for about 30-40% there, which is... It's always a standard, is what it yeah. is. I, mean, I was gonna say disgusting, but you're definitely right too. <laughs> I mean, that's that's unfortunate for you, for NWA. Uh, but now you know, like, if we lose one fight, this map's over. So they're gonna throw everything they have into every single fight, which makes old management really difficult, but really key if you want to be a top team to be able to do that appropriately at this stage of the game. Well, I, uh, Manitin could be the hero here. So many times you see a D.Va come over the top to deal with the combo that is up over on this edge. See, he knows it's coming towards him. He has to concuss away, puts himself in a strange position. Now inside, you don't want to be fighting indoors as Farah goes against a lot of where your abilities lie. Still trying to get these last bits of cleanup, but it's been slow going for Misfits to be able to get these last few kills. 
Ooh, some stall out here. Got to focus on the Mercy. She's dancing around. Good job staying alive for a bit by IPN. And she got, I think, another 30% of ult built up from that one. But Mills will be coming back up to help the sound of the post. Rom's going to connect, and he's in a drop, which should allow the rest of Misfits to take this point. But leave it to NWA to continue to duke this one out. Reinforce has a proper range to stall for time if they do need it. Otter being too suited will finally allow the point to be turned over or no. So we'll just jump to the point in the last few seconds. Oh, sweet summer child. We must teach you more Oasis. The point is never over. They are never off the point. It is never flipped over until it's actually flipped over. It seems like everything would point to they should be able to do it. There's the flip. There's the barrage. But Resurrection comes in. zebo has got one of his own should any of his team fall. And we are still going. This stage in particular Killer on Oasis seems to have uh, the longest staying power of all. IPL find, or IPN rather finds himself all alone in the back. Well, just like IPL, he is dead. Reinforced <laughs> <laughs> with that primal rage, is Aww. still going to be pulled onto this one. Get the suit yet again. <laughs> the overtime should be taken away in just a few seconds of time, and it should be Misfits <laughs> taking. And again, the yeah, first. It or not. Who knows? should be. There it really should be. I agree. There is there is should and there is is. Um, yeah, that's that is first stage for misfits. But you can see what uh, Ninja's with that dude's plan was, though, with picking Oasis. Now, what we kind of prophesize is that a map that is at least more friendly to a pharmacy combo. That stage in particular, I, I thought it, it's the best one for them. And they're they're trying new stuff out. They they really know that they have the talent on the team, I think, and I think they do. It's just a matter of wh which town's gonna mesh together. How are they going to finally find these wins? Because these are players that I've seen on different teams all have solid games, good games, and I mean, this might not be their tournament, but looking ahead, they have to start finding answers. I mean, it's just like Cassidy. You can take the two best catches in the world and they can still be terrible together, or you can take the two worst, like you and me, and have a somewhat reasonable cast. That sounds uh, somewhat you're, nice. You're overselling it. I mean, somewhat <laughs> reasonable might be overselling it a bit. Um, yeah, uh, mediocre at best is how I generally describe myself. That's being nice. Yeah, I mean, like, in line, like, oh, dating. Oh, that is a chunky rocket. That's why you don't take the trampoline over the top. You get bopped. Zebosai ate it right away and then ate it after. I gotta say, Mikey, uh, this is why I, I've had respect for him overall, is because I think that as far as just the one mechanic of air to air rockets, he is he's in the conversation as uh, top tier in that aspect of his game. Or whatever other marks you want to take against him, fine. But air to air rockets, Mikey's sick. All right, well, Nevix to try to use the blade, but he still maintained 91% of his ultimate there. So he really didn't lose out too much on that one. But the point, it's still being fought out quite heavy by both teams, but it seems like it's going Misfits' way. So NWA keep losing too many men here. Yeah, Tvik has been a nuisance just to the people in the air as well. As you've noticed, they've gone with a different setup rather than trying to fight Pharmacy with Pharmacy, which against Mikey can be a daunting prospect. They've decided to just go full triple DPS, and Tvik is getting a lot of damage in. I think that you can run this combination against the Pharmacy and totally be totally fine. Yeah, everyone's just got to chip in. The comms have to be there. Nevik says, I got to dash through. Tvik says, I got to clip in. Manitans, okay, I got the last couple bullets. It's a team effort. Well, it's also, it puts a lot more pressure on Evo to keep keep himself and his team alive because if you just if you faint and attack into the area with a couple of shots out of Manitim and then you dive on the rest of the team who don't have the support of an extra healer, yeah. it's really easy to pick up those kills. And I feel like that's an easy way to dismantle this or just pop headshots off like that as Manitim almost takes him down in the air. I love the positioning of Zebo actually hanging out with Manitin up here. A lot of times you don't see teams necessarily prioritize taking bridge, but anytime Manitin takes or anytime Zebo takes damage, Manitin's been there to heal him up. A nice res though might be able to loops around for NWA. Nevix has to put the blade away. They're going to play in traffic. I mean, that's what my parents used to tell me to do growing up and does not <laughs> work out very well. That? You don't know my parents. You don't know what a bad <laughs> person. Just go play traffic, honey. It'll be fine. <laughs> um, it was fine. I persevered. I made it through. Uh, only a few broken bones and concussions. I don't think those concussions have bothered me. I don't think those concussions have bothered me. And <laughs> <laughs> the transcend will come off here on the points. Trying to bring it back, but still the stall has been there. Ninjas with attitude has been unable to take it over. Barrage might lend well towards that. I feel like it's just been contested since 20%, and we're now up to 75 here as Misfits continue to stall this one out as long as they possibly can. Nevix 
I don't think he's even died in this game as he finally will drop here to honor. And NWA still have not captured the point because Tavik's still there. And he gets the assassination on Ipe Candy who had 90% on his ultimate. This yeah. could be huge. This could be Misfits actually taking this point. But not taking it back, but taking control back as they're still holding on to it. Yeah, it was absolutely crucial to take down the main source of healing and then the resurrection possibility. The problem is it's been so long that the res might be able to come in. If they can res Winston and Lucio here, they might be able to bring back this fight. But that window is closing quickly as they're back in spawn. Ammo goes down as well. And the chances for Ninjas with Attitude to have a chance on this map are coming slowly to an end despite that res. The cleanup is there. Resing right into a visor. Easiest day of man it's his life. You know, you don't even miss any of those bullets, are you? Ah, beautiful traffic. Oh, man. Yeah, and the Nevix pops the blade off, too. This should be finishing this one off. And it's kind of hard to get excited about NWA because they've tried a couple of good things. Again, we've seen like the great individual shots out of Mikey up, but we just haven't seen necessarily anyone else really rise to the occasion just yet to play at the level he's been able to do, at least with the picks he's been performing and the dislodging of high ground control that he's able to do against Misfits. Yeah, there, there it's, it's been... I, it's been a good performance from him for the most part, but where's everyone else shining in there? Where, where's the next big play from them? There is a replay that we're going to see come in. This might be the very last seconds. I think this is a three-man res that tries to keep them back in, but now the cleanup is already there. He was hitting Visor the moment he saw Mercy coming in, so there was no chance for that to actually work out. Misfits now up two stages to zero on Oasis, looking to go up two to zero in the set against Ninjas with Attitude. So again, this is where we have to ask ourselves, and you're probably gonna say a little bit of column A and a little bit of column uh, I'm B. I'm not anymore. I've used that term way too many times, and I've already stole it from The Simpsons. It's not even my term to be overusing. Well, are Misfits just playing really well? Or NWA just not performing? I think actually Misfits are playing extraordinarily well so far in this match, as we saw against Laser Kittens earlier on off stream. And we're seeing them now here. The position's been really on point. It seems like they know what heroes they want to run at any given point of the map and what to switch to when they do need to. But so far, NWA been able to get some decent control of this high ground position. Well, we focused so much on the stakes for NWA coming in that we almost overlooked Misfits, who's definitely going to come out of group. But, I mean, them and Laser Kittens have a rivalry. They want to come out on top of this group, and this is going to be a, a huge step in that direction for them. So it's not a, a necessarily Misfits can take this off. They want to end this group stage with an exclamation mark. I mean, we already had the, the arguments on Twitter with, you know, about coaching between the two teams, but now I can just see people on Misfits saying, all right, where's our private jets? Yeah. You know, <laughs> NWA, or not NWA, uh, Lich Kid just got um, sponsored with it, which I'm really curious to see if they do, in fact, have private jets. I, like, how can I get one of those? I'm just so baffled by the entire thing, but I guess, you know, in, in Alicus, you trust. He, hey, I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal, but either way, it looks like Misfits are going to take the point back in a few seconds as Mineral gets himself a triple boop off. At least gets a Dsu out of one of those. Really well done by him to yeah, get that one off on a high position. Definitely a candidate for Boop of the Week. La Boop of the Week. I think, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think that's, that's what it was saying, done. Or, on, uh, on, or is that tomorrow? I don't know. I thought uh, like ruined something. I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> well, spoilers. I, you know, I thought you and Chris were friends, and now I know. Now I know that you're definitely not. Uh, of course, those recap shows have been a great part of this series. We, we enjoy watching them. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear the one today, but I'm going to check it out at home. Blade comes out trying to equalize it. Nevix's blades have been on point today. Looks for that second kill because a single kill blade, not quite enough to really assert your dominance. So Nevix gets in with that double kill. Now they will take over the top. Something McCree players have been saying for a long time. <laughs> Get that single kill with Deadeye. I mean, actually, maybe it's the opposite for them. Like, yes, I got a single kill. <laughs> I was going to say, single dead kill with Deadeye. Deadeye. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> you mean it's not just a zoning alt? So if it comes no, in, you can actually get <laughs> zones Watt out of the game. They've taken the statistical advantage here on the point as their percentage continues to go up. Kill feed all misfits right now. They get a triple kill. <laughs> Episode, like, no, I know you're gonna fall to your death, but I really want to kill you right now. But well, you gotta charge that alt. I, exactly. The thing with Sombra is her alt, alt charges really slowly, so any point of damage you can get in just to make her alt it's actually the charge ult for the game. Yeah, right? it's the worst. I never have alt up as Sombra. And you're a big Sombra fanboy now, actually. I am. You I'm, bu I'm buying Golden that. Sombra. I totally am. One, it's it's a really cool weapon model. And two, I think it would tilt people if I have Golden Sombra and I'm as bad as Sombra as I, as I am. <laughs> well, if he comes in yet again, here catches on almost every single person of NWA. I can't sit a fall because he can't use his Transcendence while hacked. 
and Mill's gonna hook off as well. And Mystics, I think they just pretty much put their foot down here saying, this is our map here on Oasis. You might have chosen it, but we're gonna win it. 92% now for Misfits, and MWA have to hurry to get to the point. Yeah, and Manitin's just gonna send that right to their spawn. The self-destruct forces out this transcendence. That's largely probably just to get Zenyatta onto the point. Zoom Yada in full effect. They will get to the point. Meanwhile, Nevix has found himself another target in Dragon Blade. Zenyatta zoomed to the point only to be met by a blade. And I do not see, I mean, look, I'm not much of, of an analyst and a caster. I don't see NWR bringing this back. So much. Yeah. yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Not only in <laughs> physical stature, but in mental acumen. Just not a whole lot going on anywhere for me. got the looks. Come on, just don't. Uh, that's what your mom says, at least. No. You got the looks, honey. You're special in your own way. Yeah, she, you have the you, looks you, for radio. Yeah, you, you, you have the looks, now go play in traffic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about the concussion? <clears throat> what concussion? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Misfits, what? They take uh, a clear victory on Oasis here at 3 0, looking just to be the stronger team, hands down, and it's hard. To, I mean, there's there's been some great individual plays out of NWA. Uh, yeah. Mikey on the Fair has been fantastic to watch. Yeah. But you can't win a game 1v6. And that's the thing. I didn't even think that Mikey A has been playing well on Tracer. I mean, we've seen some of those plays. He's in the kill field. He's getting multiple kills. But they're just unable to actually get them to convert into actual team fight victories. But I want to talk about Nevix a little bit because you guys had mentioned that at the second to last Dragon Blade that he brought out there, he was still able to get two kills. And we were talking about like the importance of Lely's trying to convert that into two kills. But not only that, it might even be worth it just to get a sound barrier with your, you know, anytime you can get a support ultimate out, he got the sound barrier and two kills there, and I mean, it's hard to go against that's that. That's what we see out of most, like, top-level teams now, is you can get a blade off, yeah, but it's mostly just to bait out a transcendence or to bait out a sound barrier. So for you to actually do that and get kills on top of it is not an easy feat. We saw earlier today, uh, you know, Tavik going in and just pressuring down Zenyatta's right, and popping yeah. off transcendences, and I think he was also trying to do that earlier on in Hollywood because you saw him just like blinking in. It's like no, just kidding, blinking in. No, just kidding. But like when Tavik blinks in on you, you have to be thinking at any moment I might have to pop this to save my team.